These videos and accompanying PDF package have been prepared by Patricia Malia. Personal use of these items is welcome. However, any use of these videos and package for commercial or monetary gain is not permitted without express consent from the author. When we look at financial statements, one of the things we also want to look at is how profitable the company is. We're going to let our investors know whether or not their decision to invest with us has earned them any money based on the amount that they have paid for the shares. First, earnings per share or basic earnings per share is calculated using net income or profit over the number of shares that are outstanding. We actually use weighted average number of shares, but I don't want you worrying about this calculation. Basically, weighting the number of shares means that depending on when the shareholders purchased their shares, that's how much weight we give to the shares that are outstanding. Right now, just concern yourself with the fact that there were 20,000 common shares outstanding and those common shares made $61,500 in profit this year. Let's have a look at where I found this on XYZ's financial statements. Here on the income statement is the profit for the year of $61,500. This is before other comprehensive income. So we're only going to look at the income from our normal operations. Here underneath the income statement, you can see that already calculated for us is the weighted average number of shares of 20,000 for 2014. This information has to be provided for us either on the financial statements or in notes to the financial statements. Already calculated and provided for public companies is this number of $3.075. So earnings per share, if we have made $61,500 in profit for the year and 20,000 shares get to share in that profit, then each share gets $3.075. This tells us that anybody who purchased a share, one share has earned this amount this year. What we will want to do with this is compare it to last year to see if the amount has increased or decreased. We will also want to compare this for each shareholder, how much each shareholder paid for their shares. We don't know how much the shareholders paid for the shares because each would have paid possibly a different amount depending on how much the share was worth on the market at the time. What a lot of investors like to do with this information is first find the price of the share right now on the market, which I have disclosed at $32, what the market thinks the share is worth, and put this over the earnings per share of $3.075 to come up with what we call the price earnings ratio. To completely understand the price earnings ratio and how it is used, what I like to do is turn the calculation upside down. If I turn the price earnings ratio upside down, I can see that the shares earn income of $3.075 and you can buy one today for $32. So when people buy the shares today, they are buying them at a price that will earn them 9.6% return on their investment. There have been a lot of dot-com companies whose shares have sold at a 70 price earnings ratio. So the question is, why would someone be able to sell a share with a 70 price earnings ratio? If you're selling something where the market value is 70 and the earnings per share is 1, your return on your investment is extremely low. What would drive the price of a share up to the point where you are earning very little return on your investment? The reason for a high price earnings ratio is the person buying the share is buying it for future income, not present income. 
So the price earnings ratio tells us in this case, it's a 10.4 or investors are expecting 9.6 return. These investors are buying the share for today's income, not for tomorrow's income because if it was for tomorrow's income, they would be willing to take less return today, drive the price of the share up.